in Dallas on Thursday. I was in Dallas on Thursday. You could have gone in there. It's across town, but yeah. There were several of these things. Yeah. One of them was the Gillies. We went to the high and we went into the big hall and had kind of all there. And there was. I was in Allen from Wednesday to Saturday. So. Uh, Years later, drove me and Alan just got to the palace. Uh, no, uh, because I didn't sell the world. Yeah. Here, I get the name. We
All right, we're going to call this meeting to order at 5.30. We'll begin with a roll call. Shana Martinez, District 1. Bill Carey for District 2. Bill King, District 3. David Merz for District 4. Herb Dyer, District 5. And Darren Schroeder, Mayor. We're all here. If you would please uh, stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation. To the U.S. flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And to the Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one, indivisible. And we have Pastor Gutierrez from, I'm uh, sorry, Gutierrez Eat? from <laughs> <laughs> Discover Church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this cool weather that we're experiencing. We thank you for this meeting. I pray that you're, uh, you would just give a, a, a presence of peace in this meeting. One, uh, also product, productivity. I pray for our council. I just ask you, Lord, to uh, bless them and their families for what they give to this community. Help them in this meeting to make decisions. Help them to make those decisions quickly. Uh, on, on the better half of this community and we thank you God for what they're doing and what they're going to do and I pray that you will get them out of here early in Jesus we pray amen all right Bubba you're next all right next item is citizens comments uh, if you'd like to speak for citizens comments please uh, state your name and your address and uh, just, again, I want to reiterate this every time. When people speak for citizens' comments, if things are not on the agenda, we cannot respond to them, but we love having you come down and, and talk to us. Oh, that's good. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, this is very important. So I've got my readers on and I've got my notes. Great. And you'll start um, with your name and your address? Oh, yes. I'm Arlene Smith. My address is 811 Lower La Crosse Road here in Castroville. Thank you. So. We have learned a lot, I just wanted to point this out, from our reopened theater. The films that we've watched have been very educational. We've learned about the Alsatian language. We've learned Tom Cruise doesn't age. <laughs> and we've learned from my big fat Greek wedding three that we have been remiss in providing our mayor with all the safety equipment needed for him to conduct his day-to-day -day official duties. So a group of concerned citizens got together, maybe a <laughs> to discuss the oversight. Therefore, I would like to present you with your very own mayoral safety car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just sit here on it. And right in front of where he goes. Uh, is he supposed to wear that? <laughs> I hope so. It's not a bad idea. It says that's on this. That's what mine would say. Yours maybe not. Sorry. <laughs> Let's keep it in the back of your car and use it. There we go. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Make sure he brings it home with him. <laughs> I give me a caution. Beware. So when he parks his car, he needs to have it out, you know. Or we can say caution. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for not having the dunce on the other side. <laughs> That's very nice. I will find out who's actually driving the jeep. No, they're dog. They're, they're the dog. dog. Yeah. Sammy, when you get out of the car, he steps into the driver's seat and he's like, I'm in charge. Okay. And let's yeah, he, be clear. He's the chauffeur. It is not the jeep. It is Carrie's jeep. The jeep. Carrie's jeep. We'll find out who's actually driving Carrie's jeep. There you go. <laughs> Let that be noted for the record. That is Carrie's Jeep. Carrie's Jeep. Yeah, I think this was. I just borrowed a lot because <laughs> it's really cool. 
And she says, it turns on a dime. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, anybody else for a citizen's comments? Yeah, maybe. Potentially. They're not saying there's nothing to see right now. Oh, there you it's said it's 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 unknown. <laughs> <laughs> IT services are not until item 10 on the <laughs> Do we want to move them up? <laughs> we didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody come over. <laughs> everybody come over this side. Face that direction. We'll trade you places. How's that? And then everybody on the way up or on the ladder. Why do they have a ladder there? <laughs> All right. Well, there's not a ton of really interesting things to see. Um, all right. So next item is consent agenda. On the uh, consent agenda, we have minutes for September 26, 2023, regular called city council meeting. We have the uh, approved the ramp grant resolution declaring the official newspaper, a review application for boards and commission positions, and approve the cooperative participation agreement. I make a motion. Okay. Discussion. I have an item I would like to remove from the consent agenda. Okay. Or do I? Sorry. Yeah. I have yeah. corrections to the minutes. Okay. We'll take that out. Okay. Everything else good to stay on the consent agenda? Okay. Would you? I'll uh, fill, and then I'll. Uh, okay. So removing. Uh, do you want to modify? Does he have to modify the motion? No, we just removed that from the consent agenda. Okay, would you modify your motion to exclude A from the consent agenda and approve everything else? I move to approve the consent agenda with the exclusion of item A. Just to be September 23. 23, regular call city council meeting. Okay. And the second is amenable. Great. All right, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Next item is minutes for. September 26, 2023, regularly called City Council meeting. Um, I have two small corrections. Um, the citizen who spoke on agenda item number nine, the public hearing, was Kenneth Lang, not Keith. And towards the bottom of page five of the agenda of the minutes on item 17, um, I had indicated in my comments earlier to Deborah, but um, I had said something that the council. I want to make sure that my house gets up to my horse. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes with the changes discussed? So moved. Second. second. Great. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next item is mayor's report. Uh, this one got truncated a little bit uh, with uh, with our, our city administrator and our mayor pro tem in TML last week. Thank you guys for attending that. Um, so the national night out, uh, we had a lot of great people that came out. Um, we had great vendor participation. I think that we have some great opportunities for improving it again for next year. We've had some really great years and we've had some little bit mild years. I'd say this was a little bit mild year, but uh, the the weather was great. The people were great and uh, it was it was a really good time. I, I was really Happy that people came out and supported our first responders. Uh, Judge Lutz came out and sang a beautiful rendition. He did agree that if I would sing the national anthem, that he would jump out of the airplane. Oh wow! Thinking that I wouldn't do that. Yeah, and he did so not know you very well. I, I called his bluff, and, and he's like, "I'm just kidding." <laughs> I said, "You don't want me to sing the national anthem, but I will if you'll jump out of an airplane." He's like, "No, I think I'll stick with my." Kid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, a couple of things just for coming up. We do have the eclipse on Saturday. Uh, we've got a great event out of the park. You still can get your eclipse glasses at the Chamber of Commerce. I think we've got them at the library as well. So great chance to, to get involved with some really good things there uh, and lots of good stuff coming up. So um, 
Uh, next item is the council liaison reports. Uh, there was no September meeting for the Airport Advisory Board, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission. We have Councilman Kerry as the liaison. Next one is the Library Advisory Board from September 14th. We have Councilman Mers. The Library Advisory Board failed to form a quorum. Hmm. All right. Um, no September meeting for the HLC. Oh, they did. Okay. And there were several items that came It wasn't a proper meeting with that person. So say what's going on. Rick Bays did take over and did a good job. I see that. All right. And then finally, the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board from September 20th. That's they, canceled. They met, but I was not able to attend. I was out of town. Okay. Well, that's right. I think we need to have a discussion about Councilman Steyer's ability to vacation. <laughs> it rains when he leaves. Oh. Okay, you can go on vacation again. Yeah, if it rains <laughs> while it's gone, again. go as long I'd, as I'd like you to take an extended vacation, please. Uh. <laughs> All right, next item is consider and take appropriate action on accepting a petition submitted by KF Flat Creek LP for annexation into the city's extraterritorial jurisdiction, the ETJ. I, I'll just mention this for, for your benefit, and that is that you'll see it says annexation into the ETJ. I'm still not sure how or why this is, but when you look at the map, and it's pretty clear on our GIS, this is to, to annex into the ETJ 60 acres, and then once that's annexed in the ETJ, ETJ, then they will annex the entirety of the property. Uh, for whatever reason, even though our city limit in um, Alsatian Oaks annexed in, this is immediately adjacent to it. And the way I understand Texas law is that that would then it would automatically be our ETJ, I believe. But I haven't been able to get a good answer. And this is uh, this just makes it easier. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and go through this motion. But in my in my opinion, it's already have been in the ETJ. But whatever. I'll place the page Okay. So with a uh, motion and second and appropriate uh, and approval, then they will be. Do I have a motion? I make a motion and read. To accept <laughs> the petition submitted by KF Flat Creek LP for annexation. As you read it. Yes. All right, great. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Great. Thank you. Uh, next item is consider and take appropriate action on awarding an IT services contract. I know that we've gone through a lot of back and forth. Um, we had a, a great uh, committee to, to put together on this. Um, Scott from the uh, NBISD had helped us out. Scott Dixon led it. Uh, Herb Dyer uh, contributed a tremendous amount. And without, I mean, I've got to, I know I've said this in emails, but I just want to tell you how much I appreciate it. All of the work that you put into that, your insight was absolutely perfect. Your, your experience uh, really came through and showed me for that. So thank you for doing that. I think you made it that much better. Um, and I know that there was a discussion all the way up until this afternoon. Uh, so Scott, you want to take it from here? Yeah, I'll just say that we, we had seven uh, responses uh, to the uh, request for proposals. The committee met, reviewed those proposals, and 
narrowed down the list. Did some, I was given some additional tasks to follow up on for uh, those respondents. And then we did some uh, interviews as well and followed up those interviews um, with some fact finding, calling for references, verifying costs, et cetera. But ultimately, uh, the committee came to the consensus to recommend BC3 as our IT service uh, partner. Um, AJ Siebert is in the audience tonight. He's with BC3. He's in sales. He doesn't know anything about IT, but he's a really nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> you have the mic. It's a great opportunity. Uh, no, AJ's a great guy, and, and he's been shepherding this whole whole process through. Um, I, we we feel like uh, this only you know as far as the, the process this only begins. Uh, this decision tonight will only begin the real work because then we'll know we go through a transition process with HTS and you know, basically install all the software and everything else that will be needed to, to manage our IT services. But we do feel like VC3 brought the most, um, two, really two or three different advantages. One is the, the most experienced, their team, um, when you compare it to, to the other respondents, really they, they have a, a, a very deep bench where many, if not all of their uh, Service techs are are, are, are CGIS certified, and that was really kind of a big deal for the fact that they make that level of commitment uh, for uh, the company. But uh, also, CGIS, uh, just just for people that don't know what that is, is Criminal Justice Information Systems. Uh, it's a certification that allows them to uh, get onto some of the uh, the like the PD. Uh, so having that, and it's it's a pain to get. So having that level of uh, support. In See this area is really good. It's the equivalent of going through the process of getting clear, you know, government clearances mm -hmm. you know, to go through that uh, and, and have everybody at that level. But uh, that and the thorough, thoroughness of their response and the, um, the str strategy that they planned to implement for the city, we just felt like they were the best aligned to help us. But we, we really did have some very, str very strong field of contenders, and uh, I'll be reaching out to those who uh, would not choose tonight. But the recommend is recommendation of the committee is VC3. Um, as far as cost and, and budget implication, um, the total cost of the contract is within our budgeted, our, our, our scope for budget for IT services. Um, so there's not a, a huge budgetary impact there, and we're grateful for that as well. So is there, there is a slight budget amendment uh, with, the, with the VC3 contract? No, I, I don't, I, I think we'll be fine. Okay. As far as what we budgeted and what it's going to cost, I and mean, it, it, it'll, if it's slight, it'll be very slight, and some of that will be de determined as we work through the contracts and get them implemented. Because again, how we implement and the time frame and, and what that costs, there, there's still some things that I need to work out with VC3 once y'all approve this time. And for reference, the budget uh, that we our annual budget for this that we designated 150,000. We're, so we we're within cushion. what my uncle would call spitting distance of that number with this contract. Yeah, we got cushion room. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions? Where are they hubbed out of? Are they local or? Where are you hubbed out of? South Carolina. Long South Carolina. Woohoo! Hey. <laughs> <laughs> East Coast. Um, but we don't have we assets like anyway. local? Midland, Texas. Midland? Okay. I know that was some concerns of some staff in the event they needed. Yeah. Yeah. They have 1,100 municipalities that they currently support. Okay. That's a across the country. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah and, and honestly, uh, we, we had talked through this, and one of the things that they had said was, well, first of all, our, our job is to keep that from happening and finding out when that does happen. When we have so when you have on-site failures, something goes wrong with your configuration, um, their, their goal is to keep that from happening. I know that uh, like with the company that I work for, um, we have amazing, whole, just really, really good technical support, and I have never once had to have somebody on-site to handle any kind of issue. Uh, and so they do this, uh, and that's part of the sophistication of this, is they're able to do this uh, kind of management remotely, uh, and they can help us through like that. And, and it's also to, to make sure that we have fewer and fewer of those instances. So I am comfortable. I was very, very uh, concerned with 
making sure that staff was taken care of in this. Uh, and the things that we looked at, if you think about it kind of high level, it was looking at overall network and security strategy, um, looking at managing the, the components that go into that, and then the desktop support really should be the, the minor, the, the smallest components. We feel like their level of sophistication that they bring to the city and helping us with our security, and I do think security has become a bigger and bigger concern, not just for us, but for all the cities in TML. Um, that they brought the most robust response and strategy to us, so that's, uh, I think it would be an overall very good thing for the city. And as they explained, they have some pre-documented IT policies that we can review and implement. Uh, I think that that's where we've been lacking for a long time, is having those IT policies, having uh, simple things like password policies mm -hmm. and uh, access list, of, like user access reviews, and um, what is our policy on network security and on Wi-Fi security and all of these different things. So a lot of that is helping us define that so that we know exactly what it is and that we know that if we're succeeding or if we're failing, so I think that that portion of it really was something that, that gave me a large tip, aside from the fact that they just were the only ones that really responded the way that we had. And are they going to provide training, especially for like our library staff, with their computers that people come in and use and everything <coughs> to handle what to do in the event of issues or uh, you know, I think, systems? well, in place of training, I, I think one of the things missing at the library is just a better security protocol. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether the computers are wiped on a regular basis and, and that kind of stuff. So, I, so I, I think that'll be part of it. But as far as training for security and how we deal with security breaches and that kind of thing, the, the short answer is yes. Okay. Um, that was one of the things that it, not that not only they, but many of the, the respondents offered. Okay. And I know with going to the smart meter and everything, getting the word out that we're going to have a more robust you know, firewall or something like that will give uh, customers, citizens, a peace of mind. Because in this day and age where anybody's being attempted to be hacked or what have you and their data, their personal data and everything's being compromised. Well, just know that the, the one thing to know about the AMI is that we have a proprietary system. So mm -hmm. the meters that were installed at each of the radios and meters is proprietary to our system and only our system. And just as a, a illustration of this, the, the um, installer ordered too many of uh, a certain type of electric meter, and they can't do anything. They're, they're junk. They can't do anything with them. We're going to, you know, they're giving them to us, basically. We're not buying them. They overbought. They'll sit in our warehouse and as we need to replace, we'll replace. But it's because they literally only work on our system. And that's another layer of security that the, that the city invested in. It's one of the reasons we chose the census solution because it offered us that the opportunity to have a proprietary channel that's only for us. Okay. Thank you. Is there anything else that you wanted to add to that? I uh, just want to get a clarification. Are, are we accepting their original bid or are we accepting any value engineering that's, reductions? Um, that's something we're going to work through, but, but I, the committee, basically, the, the recommendation of the committee was uh, not to, to value engineer this and, and to look at what they're providing. But that said, there are some uh, changes to the bid. Uh, for instance, one of the things that was in all the bids from all the respondents was support of the PD uh, laptops, and the PD laptops have gone away. We're now on iPads. So that's a reduction of around $800 a month. Right, so that'll come out. And then we're going to look at what their what their security solutions are to, to really get the best mix. Um, so there might be a slight change there, but, but we'll probably... I'd I just like to say, uh, I read all of the bids carefully, and this bid was superior to all of them for the primary reason that they really explained how they would partner with us to learn and improve and maintain our network. They were the only company that came in and had already done the analysis and put the price into the bid for the things that they're recommending we should do. Oh, nice. Everybody else said, well, this is not in the bid, this is not in the bid, this has to be priced separately. But VC3 took our RFP, read it carefully, they came here and looked at our system, 
and they, I think they gave us a bid that's really an indication that they're going to be a good partner. And, and I was fearful. If you look back at the experience with the water treatment plant, when the city council found how much it was going to cost, they were insisting on value engineering the price down. And we're still paying for it all these years later. So I, I was very vocal in trying not to engineer the price down because then you just open the door to them saying, well, I had it in the bid. You told me to take it out. I don't want to have any of that. I wanted to be a partner. I wanted to do whatever needs to be done for the best cost. And I believe that's what we're getting. I, I think we call that devalue engineering, where you make it <laughs> worth less because you're not doing it right. And you're, I think that the, the wastewater treatment plant was a, a perfect example of that, where you're removing things that were actually necessary. I think that what we'll look at doing is finding efficiencies in how our, our in our network topology, in uh, the number of devices that we have protected, and how we're protecting them. So I think that this is kind of an ongoing thing, and that's where we'll look at finding the savings, not in removing services that are critical to them. And the, the last thing I would say is that they have a deep, deep bench compared to the other bidders. So I think we're going to be in good shape. Absolutely. Okay, anything else? So then do I have, let's see, what is the motion? Do I have a motion to award the contract for IT services to VC3? I move we approve or we select VC3 uh, and award the IT services contract to them. I'll second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next item is consider and take appropriate action on a resolution nominating a representative to the Medina County Appraisal District Board of Directors. <coughs> so for this item, I've been in contact with Dr. Kalos. Uh, their special meeting is tomorrow. And um, we can do this a couple different ways. We can wait and, and try to do it later in the month. Uh, technically, I think they're supposed to have been yeah, uh, supposed to be done Today. tonight. They're having their meeting tomorrow, or October 20th. Yeah, they're having their meeting. So it's supposed to be done by October 20th. Our next meeting is obviously October 23rd, a special meeting on the 24th. What I would suggest that you do tonight is um, that we nominate um, Cindy Malone. That's the, the uh, name that's been put forward by the ISD. She has agreed. Uh, so uh, we're grateful for that. Um, and that will, again, council or uh, the school board will make their decision tomorrow night. But we don't expect there to be an issue. Right. Do I have an, a motion to approve Cindy Malone as the city's representative to the Medina County Appraisal Board? So I'll move. Simultaneous. All right. So who wants to claim? We have one and two. Right. We have a Round motion by scissors. Council Person <laughs> Martinez. Do I have a second? I'll second. And a second by Councilman Carey. Any further uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Next item is presentation and discussion on utility rates. For this, I have a uh, presentation. Now, this is uh, substantially similar to the one that uh, you saw last time. The really only addition is the, um, the build comparison at the end, which is something y'all had requested. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go through the first slides fairly quickly. <coughs> One of the questions that council asked the last meeting is how quickly can we implement this? And the short of it is uh, probably not till January anyway, and, and we hope by January. Um, the only the, one of the issues is we're going to have to work with Tyler Technologies with Encode to um, program the new rates into the system once they are adopted by you all. So uh, there's going to have because we're we're changing how we calculate the rates that'll have to be programmed. I'll get into what that change is here in just one second. Um, so the ra rates would be um, effective January 1st. Um, there's no change to the customer charges. Uh, the electric rate adjustment uh, 
re actually reduces the current rates, but it adds a power cost recovery factor, and I'll, I'll get into that. We'll look at the bill. When you first look at it, it looks like a true reduction, and that's the first thing we'll look at in a second. And then the um, gas fuel adjustment will also fluctuate each month, at a month as it currently does. The thing that we'll do is we'll um, actually add a forecast model. So that'll be visible to the customer, but what should do for all of us is make it so that our gas bills are not quite as volatile. Now there's still going to be volatility in the price, but we're going to do our best to forecast what those prices will be. Um, so this just kind of shows you what the changes in the rates are, and you'll see um, the proposed energy charge is considerably less. That's because what you're looking at uh, does not include the actual cost of power. So you'll see what that is uh, and in the sample bill at the end of this presentation. But this shows you that the customer charge is staying the same, um, and the uh, energy charge is being reduced. So that's the electric. Can, can you just reiterate for everybody inside what inside means versus outside? Yeah, so inside city limits, <laughs> yeah. residential inside and residential outside, you'll see the, the charges are actually the same. We, we at one point, the city did charge more if you lived outside. The PUC has taken, an, the Public Utility Commission of Texas has taken an unfavorable look or, or, or opinion towards charging people more because they live outside. And as you've seen, the legislature has taken some pretty drastic steps recently about ETJs and allowing people to disannex. So um, in an abundance of caution, when we redid our rates end of 2022, beginning of 2023 this year, um, we shifted away from the inside versus outside and uh, instead uh, increased what the customer charge was and put most of our uh, revenue in that customer charge line item. So that's, that's, that that's was the big change that we made um, about a year ago. So you'll see, again, inside is people who live inside the city, the limit, the city limits, outside is outside. We do have an in, uh, a um, senior rate that is not going away. That is that that will remain the way it is. Um, seniors do get a slight discount. Of, uh, it's a percentage discount, but it's seventy five cents off of the uh, customer charge. Uh, and you'll see that senior rate uh, in a couple other places. Up there. Now, one thing that we haven't looked at, we've looked at the number of. Uh, customers outside city limits, but we haven't looked at the amount of charges, like the total consumption outside of city rates. I don't know that it's not worth revisiting that just to understand exactly what that looks like. If you have very few, very high users of, uh, of utilities and it is not something that is already in law, I don't know that it's a bad idea to take a look at doing it. Yeah, I'm just trying to think because of our electric utility, of all the utilities, our electric utility is uh, the smallest, the CCN. Uh, so it goes all the way to the edge of Walmart, and um, I'm trying to think of what's not in the city limits that would actually be a consumption for electric. Yeah, I think that we would look at that. Are, are we small amount, right? yeah. some of the residential are in town? Are on our? They're in our electric, but they're not. I in think our there's city like a, uh, a little bit of residential up 471, maybe up to like the RV park. A little bit past it, actually. Yeah. Creekside. So we have we have a limited we have a limited amount. So um, okay. So you'd like to know just a breakdown of consumption uh, by utility inside versus outside. Okay. Commercial and re broken out by commercial and residential. Please. Okay. It is also still there in the other. Okay, in water and wastewater and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. That's, so it might be just gas. Yes. No. Well, there's your gas. That's so you have residential water. inside. No, outside. wastewater is inside out. Uh, wastewater is different for commercial. Yeah. 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 Is there? A, it's fine though. Is there a question? Um, so there's your your rates for gas 
again, the uh, customer charge is not changing, uh, and the energy charge, uh, it, there's a slight increase on energy charge. This is to make up for the increased cost of the CPS contract that we just agreed to at the last council meeting. And yes, David, right, there's some there's, there's changes. I mean, it's, it makes a difference as you're inside versus outside. Looks like it does the same for uh, wastewater. So what is wastewater? Yeah, this is where you're going to see that the largest increase, and we'll actually show you a bill. Um, I'm frankly not looking forward to this just because people already hate their sewer bill. It's it's very very high, um, and it's going to get higher uh, if we pass this these rate increases. Um, but again, you can see the percentage difference. So there's your sewer, your sewer charge, and that's per unit, right? So per thousand gallons of estimated usage. And if you do that, I mean, right now, this is the time to watch your water consumption now and for the next three months. Be careful with your water con consumption because we're going to estimate your sewer charge for next year off of that, which is going up. You want to try to reduce that, reduce your water consumption to as low as possible for the next three months. How much does it cost, uh, aside from having a, a plumber, like how much do we charge to put another meter for uh, irrigation? I don't know. It will depend on the size of the meter, um, but most of those would probably be three quarter. And what's that? Yeah, so I honestly don't remember. Um, it's in our fee schedule. I don't want to say the long amount. I think it's $1,500, but I, I honestly don't remember. Um, but it's in our, that's in our fee schedule. So we should just remind people that if they're heavy irrigators, it's probably a really good idea to include that from the very beginning. Not doing the next two months. Yeah, turning off, if you have the ability to turn off your system or to mitigate the use of that system, certainly do it during the winter. That's one reason why we do it this time of year, so that people who water the grass religiously, uh, that they aren't, we aren't catching that water, which really, it truly really isn't going into our sewer system, it's going in the ground. Um, so yeah, just do, do whatever you can to lower your, your water consumption. So here's the water rates. Uh, again, you'll see we do have a tiered structure, and this is part of our conservation effort. It's part of our, our way to discourage people from using uh, you know, a ton of water. Um, it frankly doesn't seem to be doing much um, because you know, people will still use a ton of water, um, and we haven't seen that that, they, that, that has impacted their, their use of much. Anyway, so you can see again, customer charges are changing. The water rate is, and um, the average increase looks like it's around 14 percent or so. Um, just out of curiosity, would it be possible to instead of a flat like, dollar amount increase to instead make a flat percent? We can do whatever you want. <laughs> so that like people who are using a ton of water are paying this are paying more for the increase than very conservative. Yeah, it looks like it was, it was a dollar or two, right? And that's what it is across the board. Is that right? Yeah. Dollar or two. Uh, so yes, you absolutely could do it that way. The only thing we need to do is then run the analytics on what that, based on current consumption, what that looks like for revenue, right? How does how much does impact our, impact our revenue? But the short answer is yes. We can do we can do, we can set this rate model up however y'all want us to. Um, the the main objective is to have enough money to pay for the system, and we have about a million dollar shortfall, so we have to make. For all our users, over all of our systems. That's like what you all did was the you know, you, you people who work conservation wise, they're in a higher increase. How did you all come to that? No, it's because it's a dollar or two across the board. Yeah, so yeah everybody says a lower two. amount. You're so right. And that's David's point. It's like if you made it a flat fee at the different levels, maybe yeah. that would be better. A dollar, two dollars, you know, whatever it is. And we can certainly look at that. So essentially it's the same percent increase yeah. for everyone. Right. Mm -hmm.
the, the revenue would be, be the same. It would redistribute work, don't you? Yeah. Well, and, you, and my, one of the things we're going to talk about at the October 23rd workshop is <coughs> water conservation. And in my mind, one of the things you could do is put those increases, weight it so that it's more heavily towards people who use more water. Because that will impact both their water and sewer. I think it would be good to get the, get the data on consumption, historic consumption. Yes. Uh, I do have consumption numbers. The, the question is, how do you want to see that? Um, oh. Like, I know I, how you said before, which was inside versus outside, residential versus commercial, right? Um, well, percentages in each of those uh, categories as well. Because I expect that 80% of our population is in the first two. Yeah, that would be a good way to break it out. I don't know if I, I, I'm. I would assume we can do that, but I just don't know. For the memory, our average household is 126,000 gallons a year, which is just barely yeah, breaking so into the third. 10,000 gallons, that's about that much yeah. a month. So, yeah. Uh, seems like a lot. Yeah, I think we put this under the graph so that we can see that percentage. And we'll be the graph. We work I'm out all next week, so I will, I will gladly give that to John and Kathy to work on. And, and truly, they did this. I mean, I, I did not do this work. They, uh, she, she prepared all this for us. On all these charts okay. where you say FY2004, is that supposed to mean FY2024? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We went back in time. Yeah. Every one of these charts has got 2004 on it. Yeah. And I couldn't figure out what the hell we were doing. <laughs> Sorry. We're a million dollars short on the utility fund. Her, Herb has, I Herb has just. A little bit of OCD. Yeah, it's 2024. And it's not really FY. I'd still be a drill sergeant out at Lackland Air Force Base. I mean, really and truly, it's just start. It, it, these would be January. Be I guess they are. Yeah. 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 We're already in FY24, is my point. No. Yeah, yeah, but on your title. I know. I got that. Another <laughs> thing I would like to see in this briefing. I would like to see a written definition of energy charge and a written definition of power cost recovery factor. We, what's the difference between them? I'll, I'll explain that, but um, we do have that, I, I believe, in our proposed uh, ordinance, which you don't have a copy of, so I will provide that to you. But the energy charge is, is, is literally the inner, like how many kilowatts you used. So that's your kilowatt hours used times the rate. That's your energy charge. The power cost recovery factor is whatever we were charged for the energy, the power, times how much you used, right? And that's the part that will fluctuate. It won't fluctuate a lot, frankly. We're with LCRA, they have a um, tremendous history of managing their, their power costs, but it does fluctuate. Some years will go up, some years will go down, and, on, and you know, if you had a snow bid type situation where uh, markets were extremely volatile, um, you could experience some, some price fluctuation, right? So, uh, but generally what, what LCRA has been able to do is manage through those to the benefit of their, their customers. Um, so anyway, uh, that's what that PCRF is. That's the, the amount that we pay for power that we then build directly to the consumer based on their consumption. And since that part can change month to month, then month to month we calculate it. There won't be as much variability in the, in, in the electric PCRF as in the gas PCRF because gas has always been very related to Texas. But I'll get you those definitions. Uh, so this is the last thing that was requested at the last meeting. This is just a side-by-side -side comparison of a typical bill. Uh, typical could be debated, but uh, we just used some numbers here for, for to give you a good idea of what it looks like. I got um, a couple of questions. The 16% increase, does that take into consideration the footnote? Because the footnote adds up to about $55 for a typical bill. So it means much. Both of these numbers are understated by about $55. Yeah, because none of those are changing, 
But I say that the garbage <laughs> fee we, we change, uh, the garbage fee went up um, with this. The class. sales tax is based upon your usage, so that varies for everybody. Yeah. Uh, your, the surcharge but, is based on your usage. So, okay. I'm just wondering. So really, this should show about six hundred dollars on the current side, and about. Six hundred and seventy dollars on the adjusted side, and it may change the percent a little bit. Well, you add in those things in the footnote. Yeah, it might it might reduce it slightly the percentage. Yeah, it, was, it might change the percentage a little bit. But I think that I think this is because this is just indicative indicative of uh, kind of an average. So I think that this is. Well, the idea was to, to look at just the fees and the impact of the rate increases that are being proposed, and what they have absent all the other stuff. So I get, we can we can next time we show this to you with the graphs and the other things we discussed tonight, I'll show you that we'll probably bring this same slide back and then we'll add another slide that has that other stuff on it, just so you know what the what the what the true cost would be on these bills. But I think part of it is to kind of get rid of the extra noise of all the other fees. I don't want, yeah, I don't want a citizen to come to me and say, well, you showed me the perspective changes, but you left out a third of my bill. Not a third total, but no. you left out all these things that I pay, Right. so you deceive me. I'd like to show them the whole thing, because it's going to be bigger. That's kind of the theme I've been on for six months. It's going to be a lot bigger than we expect. No. Well, this is going to be big. When you look at the sewer, so just going line by line, so you're looking at the total electric charge. It went from 257.75 to 266.57. Um, I think I got it right. Yeah. yeah. So there's your 257.75, and there's your total electric at 266.57. Right. And we look at gas. Gas was 32.53. Now it's 34.61. So. Not, not a whole lot of change, it was a slight increase. Total water charges, still a lot of things. Huge change, 9420 to 106. Sometimes. Then you get into sewer, and this is why watching how much water you use matters. You go from 139.99, sounds like it's on sale, um, to 213.26. I mean, now this is a, a winter averaging amount of 13,000 gallons. Right? Yes. Just yeah. above that. Well, yeah, but they're, yeah, it's above average, but it is typical. <laughs> How does that happen? Yeah, there are a lot of people who pay 13,000 gallons. So, um, but the sewer is where we're going to get people hard. I mean, it, but the fact of the matter is everything in our business has gone up, whether it's people or pipes or uh, engineers or everything has gone up. And we can we Anyway, we, you know, the cost of doing business to maintain our water and sewer system has gone up, and we know we aren't maintaining them. Yeah, we are, we're doing our best, but we, we've got a long ways to go before we can say that the water and sewer systems are they're good. Right? You may want to add, add to your note at the bottom that also does not include the gas to the gas to charge, which, again, I understand what you're doing, but it really should go down below because um, that's not in there. Well, the gas fuel adjustment charge, yeah, I right think, here. is this. Is it not? No. It's it's not says gas it says the next line. 483. The 483. Oh, you think that is? It yeah, says gas fuel right adjustment. Yeah. Oh, see? 483, 483. Yeah. I guess it's a consumption charge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's what we're trying to get away from. Because what's happening, I mean, the way we're presently doing it, yeah. we literally, if you looked at our, and I think I showed this, an income yes. statement for our gas system, one month we're negative, next month we're positive, next month we're negative, and we're having to make up for those negatives every other month, which makes the gas, really, that, that what we're paying as consumers is really volatile. So we're going to try and fix that. All right, that's all I have. We're under an hour. Thank you. <laughs> Out. <laughs> Anything else on that? Okay, next item is a presentation. Oh, sorry.
Discussion on future agenda items. Um, one thing that we did notice, uh, and I let Scott know about the fact that Councilman Merz was not able to update that, so we just need to check permissions on everybody. Has anybody else had a problem with updating the future, the pending agenda items? Okay. It was telling me I didn't have permissions and I thought I got anybody now. <laughs> <laughs> Off the ship. <laughs> you can't you be off the off island. Off the island. <laughs> off the island. Torch. <laughs> I'm too young for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so uh, is there anything else? I had an email courtesy of council member uh, Martinez today yeah. who had a member of the VFW uh, uh, Legion. Cost her, uh, the Legion, I'm sorry. I cost her about the condition of flags outside of some of the city's properties. Tattered. Tattered. Unpresentable. Yeah, unpresentable. Uh, and we just probably need to check. I don't think that's an agenda item, but it's something. Yeah, I'll call that. Uh, just make sure that we have presentable flags. Yeah. Well, I think it's all of our facilities. The other one is the, have you seen the, uh, the fountain over at Houston Square? It's our, our green goo oh, okay. generator. Mm -hmm. It's all yeah. just a big concept. Stage four. Circulating outside water features. Yeah. 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 A couple, <laughs> 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 a couple <laughs> gallons of peroxide will take care of so, so I want to put out there on the 11th of November is the veterans um, ceremony for Veterans Day. It is Saturday, the 11th, at the 11 o'clock at September Square. So mark nice that on your. Nice so just putting that out there for everybody to put on their book, their calendar. Great. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Uh, we have that workshop on Monday. Just be aware, at 3 o'clock, the 23rd. Mm -hmm. I am out all next week. Um, I will, Leroy, I've checked with him. He's here in my absence. Uh, so you've got Jim, John, and Leroy. It's just something. It's something. It's something. It's something. It's something. That is on what day? Monday, Monday the 23rd, okay. 1500, and also the following Monday, the 30th. Okay, will you make sure you send out invitations for that? Well, I'll have to All right, let's do, a, let's do a calendar invite first and just make sure that everybody's secured it. Because, yeah, I, if it doesn't exist on my calendar. Yep. <laughs> I was in agreement. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 30th at 3. Okay. Cool. We'll all set up all of those. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anything else? We are through the agenda at 622. Wow. We are adjourned. Thank you. I think that's a record. Yeah. Recently, yes. Light's still outside.